Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys. Happy Tuesday. I hope you guys are doing good. I hope everybody had a great Easter. If you celebrate Easter, my Easter was pleasant. Um, so I want to talk about the whole DMX situation. As you guys know, DMX is one of my favorite rappers. And um, I got a chance to really enjoy his versus battle this summer. And I told you guys, hands down, that versus battle between him and Snoop Dogg was my favorite hands down. It was nostalgia central and it just made me love DMX once again and realize like, you know what? I had to give him his roses because he made so much good music that really got me through a lot, especially my teenage and young adult years. So when I heard the news about what happened to DMX um, that Saturday, I was just like, I couldn't believe it. You know, he's always had his battles with his demons and his demon is the demon of drug addiction and he's been very open and candid about that he even talked about how his mentor he talked about this in the rough riders documentary he also did an interview with talib kwali and he talked about it as well how his mentor and this man that he looked up to at the age of 14 he was supposed to be teaching him simply how to rap but he ended up lacing his blunt with crack and it really fucked him up till this day. And this is why, you know, as parents, we have to be careful with the adults that are around our children. All of them don't always have good intentions because, again, like he said, if you really cared about me and you wanted the best for me, why would you do something like that? So I want you guys to go ahead and watch a snippet of this interview. But this guy, man, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, he, he, he introduced me to what would be the best part of my life, which would be the rap. But he also, a theme of my life is blessed with the curse. And the curse aspect of it was, um, let's say I was, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't smoke cigarettes, I didn't smoke weed, I didn't, I didn't, do, I didn't do anything. I'm 14 years old. And um, me and my man should do a robbery one night and it was his birthday and we came back, we, we spent the money. I said, hey, you know, take this, go get something. Might as well be a birthday, whatever. Hmm. So he came back with a blunt rolled up. And as I'm counting the money, he likes the blunt. And I said, I, I was impressed. I don't like, I, I really smoke, nigga. Fuck out of here. And he passed the blunt around. And, um, wow. Hmm. And I hit the blood, and I'm like, like, I was no longer focused on the money. It, it, it I never felt like this. Like, it, it just fucked me up. I'm like, the fuck. And um, I later found out that he, uh, he laced the blood with, with, with the crack. Mm. My thing. Why would you do that to a child? Right. And this nigga, like, like, like 30, you know what I'm saying? And he, and he knew how I looked up to him. Yeah. He knew how I looked up to him, you know what I'm saying? And like, why would you do that to somebody who looks up to you like this? You know what I mean? Mm. All right, so you guys just saw that snippet and what he had to say about the situation. So you can tell he's still really affected by this till this day and that he's still hurt. And, and this is baggage that he's still carrying with him. Now, X has been through a lot. I mean, he's had several scares in the past. He's been in and out of jail because of his addiction. But he had been doing so much better these past few years. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, we get word that he had an overdose and he had a heart attack. So that was just really hard. It was hard for me. It was hard for a lot of people because I really want the best for X. And um, it's been sad. So then later on that evening, his lawyer came out and claimed that, that he was breathing on his own and that he was starting to look better, but he wasn't out of the woods yet. He's being in the hospital as a result of a heart attack. He has been taken off life support system and he's breathing on his own. But we are concerned. It would be disingenuous for me to suggest that I'm not a worried man at this particular point. Earl Simmons, DMX in my opinion, is one of the great poets of our time. And what he had to say, if people bother to listen and they can overcome their hostility to rap, 
would learn a great deal. Well, come to find out he had gotten some misinformation and that's what was so frustrating because it's like every other hour TMZ was posting a bunch of random info and you really didn't know who to believe. So we thought the lawyer had the tea, but obviously he didn't because then they came out an hour later stating that he was still in a vegetable state and that he was not doing too well and that his family was going to go up there to go visit him. Well, now it's Tuesday and it seems like the prognosis is getting even worse. People have been going to the hospital. They've been visiting him. They've been, you know, standing outside of the hospital singing and rapping his songs. I mean, people are really hurt behind this whole situation. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. So, like I said, it's a lot of emotions running raw when it comes to DMX. And what was another interesting thing that I had pointed out on my Instagram is that the day we got the news it was 4321. And so Sean King had posted, today's date is 4321. And he says, that's all. I just thought it was cool. Well, for you DMX fans, we all know that he had a song with LL Cool J, Cannabis, Met the Man of Red Man, and that song was called 4321. So I find that very ironic. Y'all know I don't believe in coincidences, honey. So I find that ironic that the day that he's in the hospital suffering from this ailment, you know, him overdosing is also the name of their song. So that was just really weird. So long story short, a lot of celebrities have been posting and sending well wishes and, you know, sending him prayers and things like that. Head in the sky. Well, Funkmaster Flex did an interview today with Page Six and he basically went off. He was not here for it. He feels like a lot of celebrities are fronting and things like that. So I want you guys to go ahead and listen to what Funkmaster Flex had to say. Go ahead and check this out. Look at DMX and him getting hurt. If he gets past it, I wanna ask everybody that posted, said something about it, put up 10 posts. Okay, are you gonna to go to his house now if he's better and give him some advice? Maybe he didn't make a lot of money in the last five days. You're gonna you're gonna provide something? Or, or, or what are you gonna do? You, have, you know what the craziest thing to me, and maybe I'm venting today? People, can find the picture of the video that they had with the person that's going through a tragedy in 30 seconds. But you haven't called that person in 10 years. You haven't called them in five. Because you're not putting up that picture or that post because you are concerned about some people. You're trying to make your affiliation that you know them. All right, so you guys just heard what Funkmaster Flex had to say. And here goes some more information from the interview, okay? So Funkmaster Flex says, The music business is a gorilla. It's a bottomless pit of happiness or depression. I don't want to say people don't help you, but I want to say there are people who actually know when a star is struggling but don't help sometimes. You don't always get the best help when money is being made, he added. It's rough for someone like DMX who may have been in a mental and emotional state of childhood trauma that has happened to him, then being thrown into money and fame. I know he shares the demons. We may have to amplify that demon and amplify his story and his feelings so that the next generation can kind of see Little better, little clearer. Meanwhile, Funk Master Flex says he's frustrated by celebrities, so-called friends who post on social media in troubled times, but don't lend their support when it counts. He says people can find a picture that they had with that person that's going through tragedy in 30 seconds, said Flex, but you can't call but you haven't caught that person in 10 years. Then he goes on to say, let me see the picture of you when, when you went afterwards to his house because you were so concerned. I never see that picture where they go to the house. Nipsey Hussle passed away and every washed up rapper made a pilgrimage to L.A. to go to the marathon store to take a picture or to get their card swiped. Bro, Nipsey needed that support while he was alive. So that is what he had to say. And I don't disagree with him. I remember T.I. running to the marathon and, you know, being super extra, looking for attention. Whatever, honey. But I also want to say this. I feel like at this point, this is just neither here nor there, Funkmaster Flex, okay? Um, it was just announced an hour ago that DMX is still doing really bad. And they're saying that right now he is on life support. He's in a vegetative state. 
And this is what his manager is confirming. So it looks like it's not good right now. He's basically being kept alive by machines, you know. So I just don't think that this is really the time to be arguing and going back and forth and pointing fingers. Because one thing I do know about when you're really trying to genuinely help somebody it shouldn't be anything that needs to be announced, okay? So I don't think it's fair to say what somebody has done or what somebody hasn't done just because you don't physically see it and it's not something tangible that you can physically hold, like a picture of them helping said person doesn't mean that they're not helping. And let's also remember that help comes in all types of forms. It can come in the form of a kind word, a prayer, a donation, you know, so there's different ways to help people. Everything should not be for show on social media to prove that you're being a good person and that you're helping somebody out. While I get what Funkmaster Flex is trying to say, I think he's kind of being a bit passive aggressive um, because, again, we could point fingers at you and say, well, what have you done? We haven't seen any pictures with you and DMX in a while. Have you helped them out? Have you taken them to rehab? Have you done this and that? So again, when you point fingers, there's always three pointing back at you. At the end of the day, I really want him to come out of this. I really want DMX to be okay. This has been really emotional for me because I'm just a big fan of his. And I just didn't want to see his story end like this. And when I saw him during the versus battle, like it made me so happy. Like I remember DMing people like if you have not seen the versus battle, please go watch it. This is one of the best ones. Like I was just so ecstatic. Like that kept my attention the whole two and a half hours. It's like I didn't even want it to end. That's how good him and Snoop Dogg were. So, you know, my heart goes out to him, his 17 kids, his whole family, his new wife, his ex-wife, Tashera. You know, it's just really sad because we watched this man struggle for years. We watched the things that he's been through. And then we also watched him just speak truth to power. I still remember the poem that he did about the industry. Like that still gives me chills to this day. Gone is the thing that's on my mind the most. You know what I'm saying? The thing that we all got to deal with every day, but don't really know. The industry. The industry. Man, it's not the same. Doesn't have to do with talent. It's about playing the game. The industry. Real niggas is dying to get in. The industry. Just to find they don't fit in. The industry ain't what it used to be. The industry is trying to control the way you MC. They want you to dress like this and talk like that. But I'm going to dress like this and talk with the bat. The industry. Got your word meaning nothing. The industry. Fuck what you heard because he's bluffing. The industry. Money, bitches, hate. For that day to try to take a fucking thing off my plate. The industry like, wait. But in the streets, we like, get them. <laughs> 17 up in that thing. Get them sleeping and hit them. The industry, if you ain't got a strong mind, the industry will break you down. It's a matter of time. The industry, vultures with nothing to feast on. See me? I'm getting my beast on. The industry, stay in the dirt, play in the dirt. Test the wrong one in the industry and you will get hurt. I'm not an industry artist. I'm an artist in the industry. So I do what the fuck I want because nobody can finish me. The industry wanted dead or alive new artists to sell their souls in the way they survive. The industry don't give a fuck about you. But the industry couldn't make a dime without you. The industry, I'm sick of this industry shit. The industry playing them like an industry bitch. They tried to finish me quick, but I am long, so I stand strong. Fuck a beat. Listen to the words in the damn song. Yeah. I only, I, I only know how to speak the truth, you know what I'm saying? So I got a, I got a little short joint I'm going to hit you with, you know what I'm saying? And, and it basically reflects on my relationship with the industry. This is what it is. Often, my words fall on deaf ears. Motherfuckers be listening, but don't hear. Talking to a nigga, he be sitting right here. I be like, where you going? Nigga be like, yeah. Thank you.
He was one of the few rappers that could talk about God and heaven and the devil and hell and just all types of stuff and make it make sense. He was one of the first rappers who was not scared to rap about God, to rap about things that Jesus has done for him, to rap about scripture. When other people are like, oh, that's not cool and keep God out of music, DMX was doing that long before Kanye West's Jesus Walks. So you write... Everything I say, yes. Yeah, I mean, that's... You, you write all of your yes, songs. all of my lyrics. I wouldn't be able to call myself an artist if I didn't write. You've had, um, I guess I would call it a gospel song or certainly... A gospel a, a, song and a conversation with the Lord on every album. Uh, on yes. every, on every album. Lord, give me a sign. I, I pulled some of those lyrics out. Uh, Tell me what these lyrics are and it's what they mean. It's, it's a conversation with the Lord. I really need to talk to you, Lord. It's the last time we talked. The walk has been hard. Now I know you haven't left me, but I feel like I'm alone. I'm a big boy now, but I'm still not grown. I'm still going through it. Pain and the hurt. Soaking up trouble like rain in the dirt. And I know only I can stop the, neck, the pain with just a mention of my Savior's name. In the name of Jesus, devil, I rebuke you for what I go through. We're trying to make me do what I used to, but all that stops right here. As long as the Lord's in my life, I will have no fear. I will know no pain from the light to the dark. I will know no shame. Spit it right from the heart, because it's right from the start that you held me down and ain't nothing they can tell me now. Lord, give me a sign. <laughs> On top of that, you're not seeing people making little sly remarks. Oh, well, he also talked about the devil. He also used devil imagery. He never glorified the devil. That's the difference between him and Little Nas X. DMX wasn't sliding on a pole down to hell to go get the devil a lap dance. Okay? So you better study his music and his lyrics and what it was about before you come at me with some DMX bullshit, okay? So I really appreciate the fact that his music was just well-rounded. He had the party music. He had music for the females. He had, you know, the hood music. I mean, it was just well-rounded, and he could rap his ass off. You know, he was just uh, an amazing talent all the way around. And, and it's very rare right now to find these type of talented rappers. You know, most people are mumbling or they're just talking about topics that I don't give a shit about. You know, but I mean, he just really said some deep stuff. That's why I had I had to, you know, post my video of me rapping. Lord, give me a sign because that's one of my favorite DMX songs. And, you know, just got me really emotional thinking about that. I was happy because I thought that he had finally gotten that drug demon off of his back and that he was doing good. And, you know, the the. Uh, Rock, the Rough Rider documentary had just came out and I really enjoyed watching that on BET. So, you know, right now I'm just going to keep X in prayer. You know, I don't know who's there for him, who wasn't there for him. I don't care. You know, I just want him to come out of this. But honestly, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. So anyways, you guys, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation. How do you feel about Funkmaster Flex calling out so-called rappers and saying that they weren't there for X and they're only fronting by posting pictures of themselves in DMX? How do you guys feel about this whole situation in general? Were you a fan? Did you enjoy his music? So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Remember to hit the subscribe button because YouTube has been unsubscribing people. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Feel free to share the video. And last but not least, make sure you hit that notification bell so that way you can be down with the notification squad. I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces.